Hey, good lookings. What's kickings? We're back with the next chapter of our little Cinder's fairy tale. So in the last episode, we headed into town and completed Lady Carmosa's errand. Although we perhaps stayed a bit too long and now we're coming back pretty late and we just have to hope that our stepmother isn't too wicked with us. So I think we're heading straight back home and just, oh, I just hope this is going to go okay. Here we go. The journey back to my house, it was much too short. I am not looking forward to facing Carmosa or my sisters again. At least I got a rare reprieve from their insults today. I wish it had lasted longer. I'm terribly late. Carmosa told me to hurry back and it's nearly nightfall. I'm, I'm sure she's skimmed me alive. Cinders, do you have any idea what time it is, you useless girl? Where have you been all this time? Uh, I, I, I was doing an errand. Yeah. What I do in my own time, it's not any of your business. I work for you without any form of compensation, so why do you care if it takes a little longer to get the tasks done? I did what you told me to do, after all. Foolish girl! A person's usefulness is not in merely blindly following orders, but in following them efficiently. You may babble all you like, but the truth is that you are simply a lazy child. At least you managed to finish the task appointed to you, though I take little solace in that. Is it too much to hope that you managed to keep some of the money I gave you? Well, he said the price was 200 gold pieces, so that's what I paid him. Why am I not surprised? I suppose it is foolishness to expect more from a girl as disjointed from reality as you. What are you talking about? Well, you never take the first offer. Anyone who conducts business, no, anyone in their right mind knows that. Tobias is my friend. He wouldn't... Enough! I am not interested in your excuses. What a disaster. You are more useless than I could have imagined. If I stopped feeding you, it would be exactly what you deserve. But I suppose I would be arrested for petty crime if I did that. But I... Silence! Get out of my sight. Just looking at you makes me ill. You will go to your room and you will stay there until you are summoned. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Oh, where are we now? We appear to be in the castle, perhaps. The palace castle. The palace. <laughs> My lord, I've been told you wanted to see me. I have been informed of the hostage situation at the marketplace today. I also heard that you handled the situation rather admirably, and for that I commend you. Thank you, my lord, but the truth is that I regret having to kill so many men. They couldn't even put up a fight. Such is the burden of those in positions of power. We must make difficult decisions for the sake of protecting others, and it is not a choice but a duty. And you performed your duty to perfection. You honour me with your words, my lord. You deserve it, and after all, my father, your king has always spoken well of you, and I know he even considered you a friend. If the king spoke so, I am honoured by such confidence. Truly. What do you think of my father? How is it to serve under him? The king was a wise, skillful, and strong leader, and I would have followed him anywhere. That is what I have heard from everyone who knew him, and already I fade in comparison. My prince... I have not yet been crowned, and his father's last wish was that I should find a wife first. No doubt he wished that I find someone capable of ruling by my side. Of course, every noble in the land is eagerly pushing an eligible daughter towards me. But I need a strong woman I can rely on, a queen who can support my agenda, no matter how hard it's going to be. I am a simple warrior, my lord. I know very little of romance and politics. Nonsense. My father trusted you in more matters than war, and I too am willing to do that. Advise me, not as the captain of the guard, but as my friend. But I confess, even my own palace is not a safe place for discussing such delicate matters. The walls have ears, and I would not wish for my search for a wife to become any more public than it already is. Might we go hunting together tomorrow morning? I think we would find the forest a safer place for a discussion. 
Such an action is dangerous, my lord, and if something were to happen to you, there's no one to succeed you on the throne. Is that so? I cannot imagine anything safer than having the famous captain of the guard by my side. If that is what you wish, my lord. That is indeed what I wish. You can go now, friend. My prince. Good old Perel. Brave captain of the royal guard and first sword of the kingdom. Veteran of the renegade war. Reduced to killing common thugs and guarding market stalls. Not yet aware of how obsolete his role is. These are different times that require a new kind of bravery and power. Our wars will not be fought using iron and fire, but gold and lies. That is Prince Basil. Basil? Basile? I don't even know his name. I hope you can adapt to these new times, my poor old friend. Because when I become the king and start realising my plans, goodness knows I'm going to need someone like you. There we go. Little bit of exposition on Pirot and the prince there. But later that night, back in my bedroom. Finally, I have some time to myself after doing Carmesa's bidding all day. Still, it could have been worse. Carmesa was furious and I got nothing but cold scraps for dinner. But at least I was able to get away from the house for most of the day. I always love going into town. I can't believe how exhausted I am after today though. My feet ache and... I feel so sleepy. I should go to bed. Kamesa certainly won't allow me to sleep in tomorrow. Oh? Is that someone knocking at the door? Why has someone been visiting us at such a late hour? Silence! I paid for your discretion and yet you pound on the front door as if it's a war drum. Right, right. Pardon, madame. I swear I'll be as silent as the tombs are. Right away. Mum's a word. Enough with your nonsense. The package is ready to go. Can I trust you? Oi, oi, you wound me pride, madam. I'm more trustworthy than an old priest in a confessional. Such an utterance is of little comfort to me. <laughs> Knowing can escape Carmesa's biting tongue. Now prove there is some value to your words and go before someone sees you. I think he's gone. What is that all about? What on earth is Carmesa trying to hide? Maybe I should sneak out the window and try and follow him? He can't have gone far. If I leave now, I'm sure I can catch up with him. No, no, that's crazy. I can't do that. Or can I? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna follow the mysterious visitor. Here we go. I must be crazy, but this might be my only chance. How long have I waited here, just wishing for a change, and finally an opportunity's presented itself? Carmosa clearly has a secret, and... If I could figure it out, I might have an advantage over her. Hmm. No one's outside the window. Now's as good a time as ever. Here goes nothing. Well, now what? I tried to keep my distance while following that man, and now I've lost his trail completely. If he's somewhere up ahead, I'll really have to hurry to catch up with him. But if I accidentally pass him, then I run the risk of running into him when I return home. Ow! Curse these demonic excuses for plants! The way you scratch at a fellow, you're more like wildcats than shrubs. That must be him! He's close. I better hide. Ah, oh, blasted rocks! What are they doing in my path? You'd think they'd clear out this place, accounting that a fellow can't see a thing in the dark. It's not proper, I tell you. Well, I'm sure this be the place where I'm scheduled to meet that smart-ass merchant. Smart-ass or not, shouldn't you be more careful when talking about the man who pays you? Oi, boss, I was just taking a little, talking a little to myself, no harm meant, you know? Truly, I suppose I can let this one go if you've bought the package as discreetly as Lady Carmesa requested. Of course, of course! Nah, no it's about it, boss. It wounds my honour that you doubt my competence for even a moment. No, I'd never doubt you. Now, hand it over. Uh, before I do, boss, I have a little something I'm needing to ask you. And what would that be? You know I'm an honest man, but my curiosity just took hold of me so hard and I had to have a look inside this package. And lo and behold, my eye spies a mighty fine necklace set with rubies and made of gold. It's worth thousands of sovereigns at least, yeah? I specifically instructed you not to look inside. But the necklace? Yes, it's probably worth quite a lot of money. 
Oh, I don't get it, boss. Why is the noble lady paying us to take this off her hands? Seems all wrong ways around to me. I'm sure she has her reasons, and you're not being paid to poke around and ask needless questions. In fact, if you don't keep your mouth shut, you won't be paid at all. Whoa, boss, no need to get so angry. My mouth is secure as the royal treasury is. I doubt the contents are quite as valuable. Still, you've completed your task, so here's your pay. Fifteen sovereigns. Try not to drink it all at once. Me? Never! You wound me with your accusations, boss. I'm sure. Well, we should return to town before someone stumbles upon us. What on earth is Tobias up to? Never mind that. If I don't do something, they'll leave before I can do anything. Now might be my only chance to confront him, but I probably shouldn't act too impulsively. Or should I? Let's do it! Well, there's no time like the present. Hold on! Cinders, what are you doing here in the middle of the night? I was following your employee from my house and it looked like he was up to no good. I didn't think he'd leave me to you. You have a lot of explaining to do. I'm not sure who the pretty bird is, boss, but she definitely means business. Well, that much I know. You shouldn't have come here, Cinders. And why not? Are you and Carmosa up to something? It's not what you think it is. The, the only reason for the secrecy is because this is dangerous. Please, it's nothing that you should have to worry about. Really? Because it looks pretty shady to me. Some people value their privacy and there's nothing shady about that. I'm not sure I believe that. Should I trust Tobias? Oh gosh, this is actually quite a difficult choice. I'm going to trust him. He's been my friend. I've known him for ages. I'm sure he wouldn't do anything that would put me in any danger behind my back or anything like that. I'm going to trust him. It's Tobias. Alright. I trust you. You've always been a good friend, Tobias, and I know you'd never do anything to hurt me. I'm sorry I jumped to such an unkind assumption. It is unfortunate that I have to deal with Carmosa, and I didn't want you to have to get involved in something like this. But a customer is a customer, you know. I understand. We're not children anymore, and you have to make a living. Life as an adult is hard, isn't it? <laughs> that it is. I'm amazed that you managed to find us, though. You're pretty daring. Daring and restless. I feel like my life is rushing past me and I haven't done anything worthwhile. I need to do something. Anything. And as long as it's meaningful, I... I can't live like this forever. No, you, you can't. I suppose you'll have to learn the truth sooner or later. But what are you talking about? Mm, I... I can't explain it just yet. Not in our present company, at least. Oi, boss, don't you trust me? No. Come see me sometime this week, and I'll explain everything, and please, don't tell anyone you saw this. Of course. Thank you so much, Tobias. I probably should head home now, though. It's dangerous this time of night. We could escort you back to the house if you want. No, I can handle my own. I'm Cinders. I'm awesome. It's fine. I've snuck along this path to the lake many a time as a child. Ha! <laughs> how very like you. You always didn't know how to sneak out without being caught. I miss those times. Too bad it's not as easy as it used to be. I don't want Carmosa to catch us together. You're right, it's a bigger risk if we go together. I'll come see you as soon as I can, but until then, farewell. I need to return as quickly as possible. Sleeping tonight is certainly going to be difficult. The next morning! There we go. Oi! What a night. Maybe Boss was right when he said not to drink away my pay in one go. Still, can't say it wasn't worth it for how great last night was. Wait, what exactly happened last night? How'd I even wind up here? The deer went this way, my lord. Oi, someone's coming. Better lay low for a mate. Hurry, before it gets away. Forget the deer, Captain. There are more important matters at hand. If this is about what you asked yesterday, my lord, I know little of politics or the affairs of the court. It's so hard doing so many voices. That's exactly why I need you. You're straightforward and honest, and you see things I can't. Behind all those smiles, everyone in the court lies to me, and... No, you're the only man I can trust. I will serve you to the best of my ability, and... What is it that you wish to discuss? 
It's about my father's last wish. I must have a wife before I ascend the throne, and how am I to choose one? There's a ball in a few days. Isn't that your chance to find an eligible young lady? In theory, but that's the problem. How will I be able to tell? The monarchy is weak without a king, and the nobles around me are plotting to advance themselves. They groom their daughters like prize spaniels in the hopes that I'll be taken in by a pretty face. I need a wife who is strong and smart, someone who can rule the kingdom wisely, not feed me her father's poisonous words. But I doubt that I'll ever find such a woman. Don't give up on every maid in the kingdom, my lord. Even yesterday, I met a young woman who had a quick wit and a fire in her eyes. She did not seem like a woman of nobility, though. A shame, that is, for I would gladly have gone to see any woman that you hold in such regard. And yet you must choose a wife from among the nobility regardless. It is, after all, tradition. As if tradition mattered to that brood of vipers, they plot to control the throne before it's even in my grasp. If I marry to please a powerful house, I risk having a fool for a wife, but what other choice do I have? If we respected the traditions to the fullest, you'd be able to choose any woman at the ball, even someone you didn't know. How convenient that this rule is often forgotten. Someone I didn't know. Captain, you're brilliant! It's perfect! I'm not sure I follow your thinking, my lord. A masquerade ball! I'll be able to choose from the women without discriminating over looks or political ties. They've been pushing me to follow tradition for so long, they can't complain if I remember the old rules. Captain... You truly are a remarkable man. I see now why father trusted you so much. Uh, of course, my lord. Well, it's always an honour to be of service. Thank you so much, my friend. You are a rare breed indeed. Still faithful to your ideals. Ideals or not, our prey has long since escaped us, and if we linger any longer, people might grow suspicious. You're right, my friend. Let us return to the castle with all haste. Now that I have a solution in mind, I can return with a light heart. Well, that's a bit of juicy gossip you don't hear every day. A masquerade ball, huh? I know a certain lady who would pay handsomely for this information, that she would. The day may have started lousy after all the light last night's drinking, but it's turned out to be quite a good one after all. All thanks to a few extra rounds at the pub. You can't go wrong with that. So there we go. Seems like a good place to end chapter 3. We found out about the prince and Perot and their plans to hold a ball to find a wife for the prince. We found out about Carmosa's shady business with a shady character and Tobias. Still not sure what that's about. And yeah, and then we'll check out chapter 4 next time. Thanks for watching. You're awesome. Bye!